Well, today we're going to talk about what you need to know about electricity. And there's a good reason for this. Electricity is one of the most remarkable ways to convey energy from one place to another. When you actually use the electricity, it's almost 100% efficient at doing the tasks you normally want to do. In the United States, we now have electricity as the single largest sector of how our primary energy is used. Keep in mind, if you talk about energy sources, electricity is not a source. We still use coal or natural gas or nuclear power to create electricity. But then that electricity goes off to the consumer, off to the end product, off to the factory or off to the home, and then is used, energy is used in that form. We're at nearly, I think it's between 38 and 40 percent of our primary energy in the United States goes into making electricity. So if you want to know about energy systems and you want to know how things work and why they do, you should really know something about electricity. So let's start at the very beginning. What is electricity? Very simply, it's the motion of electrons. Now we can take a wire, <coughs> and if there's an electric current moving in the wire, it's because the electrons are moving in the wire, literally moving down the wire. If it's direct current, that means the electrons just keep going in one direction. If it's alternating current, <coughs> they alternate directions, going one way first and then the other way in a sinusoidal pattern. So all the electrons are going to go this way, all the electrons are going to go this way, AC. <coughs> I can illustrate electricity without a wire by pumping up the voltage high enough such that the electrons will actually transit through the air itself. This demo of a Jacob's Ladder illustrates that nicely, because in this demonstration, you actually have the voltage high enough so the air is ionized and the electrons are all going one way in the spark and then the other way in the spark, one way in the spark and then the other way. You can't tell that by looking at it because your eye doesn't go at that frequency. The brain says, oh, I just see a spark. I just see that flame, that plasma between the two electrodes. But I can illustrate it by putting a piece of paper through there. And then when you hold the paper up to the light, you'll see a series of holes. Why? Because each of those holes was the electrons going one way, and then the electrons going the other. The electrons going one way, and then the other. So great, electricity is the motion of electrons. How do we make it? Harking back to when we explained about energy sources, the rearranging of nuclear chemical bonds into a more stable state then produces that more stable state's motion. We can now use a variety of engines, of machines, of contraptions to take that motion and turn it into something useful. The internal combustion engine is certainly one of those, but another one is the turbine. We want to take that heat, that motion of the hot gases when you burn something, and turn it into a circular motion of a shaft. The way power plants do this is typically through boiling water. I could have a nuclear power plant. It boils water. I can have an oil-powered power plant. It boils water. I can have a coal-powered plant. It boils water. And this water, <coughs> often because the entire walls of the boiler have pipes of water going through them, and the heat, the motion of those molecules, the hot gases inside the boiler, conducts the heat to the water and it turns the water into steam. Very hot steam, steam under very high pressure. Now that I have steam under high, very high pressure, I need to devise something to get it to turn in a circle. You could do it the way a water wheel does it, just a very simple pinwheel type contraction and I shoot steam at it and it turns. But that's not the most efficient way most efficient way is to use a series of stators, because they stay still, 
and rotors because they rotate. So if I connected all of the rotors to a shaft and I have in between them the stators that just have small slits in them, I can create a pressure difference. And that pressure difference will spin the rotor. As the gas, the hot steam cools, as the hot steam cools, I'm going to need to actually make the rotors larger and larger if I want to apply an even force along the entire shaft. So a turbine, a steam turbine, is a series of stators and rotors that are connected to a shaft. You put high pressure, hot steam in one end, and the shaft will spin. And of course, out the other end, you're going to have still steam, but it'll be at much lower pressure probably at a much lower temperature. I'll come back to the steam. But first, let's make that electricity. So, my rotor is turning the shaft and out from the end of the turbine, <coughs> I have a spinning, rotating shaft. And I'm going to connect that to a very clever device called a generator. The generator is where the magic happens. The generator operates on the principle that the force on an electron, the motion, the things that are going to make the electron move, and remember that's electricity, the moving electron, is perpendicular both to the direction of motion and to the direction of a magnetic field. So first I need a magnet. One way to do that is to have big, giant, permanent magnets. Do it other ways too with electricity, but let's just take the simplest concept. I have a magnet, like a horseshoe magnet. And that has a magnetic field going from one of the ends of the horseshoe to the other. So there I have my magnetic field. Now I need something that can go perpendicular to it. I need to move a charged particle perpendicular to it. So if I take a wire or a rod and I move it perpendicular to the field, now my motion is perpendicular to the magnetic field direction. And what did I say? I said that the force on the electrons will be perpendicular to both of those. So if one is going this way, say in the x direction, and the wire is moving in the y direction, there'll be a force on the electrons in the z direction, perpendicular to both of them. Of course, this happens to be the direction the wire is stretched. And that means there will be a force on the electron along the direction of the wire. It will move the electron in the wire. Voila! We have electricity. I could sit there and move that wire up and down and up and down. But remember, I already have my turbine, which is spinning this shaft. So if I now take this shaft and connect it to a to some large piece of material, and I wind the wire around it, not around the axis of the shaft, but along the length of the shaft, and then spin it, I'm now moving that wire down through the magnetic field. It's coming up around, then it's moving up through the magnetic field. It's moving down through the magnetic field, up through the field, down through the field, up through the field, down through the field. When it moves down through the field, there's a force along the wire pushing the electrons. When it moves up the other way, now the force is in the opposite direction. Guess what? On the downstroke, we're moving electrons this way. On the upstroke, we're moving electrons this way in the same wire. AC current. We have made AC current simply by winding a piece of wire lengthwise along an object that rotates in a static magnetic field. And, uh, and you can actually use this and you can actually make electricity yourself in class. And um, so if you touch here, yeah, yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay, and then you have to just tell us if you feel anything, okay? <laughs> uh, Katie? <laughs> Katie? <laughs> Katie, can I help you? Help you? You're right. <laughs> yeah, good. God, I thought Paramex are coming next. All right. Um, so you're welcome to feel this yourself, okay, as we pass this around class. It might be better just to prove you made electricity. Um, 
and by spinning us. That's how simple it is to make electricity. There's technological things like, hey, how do I get the current from the rotating wires to the power lines? Need some kind of sliding contact. But that's basically how we make power. Turbine spins a generator. Generator produces electricity.